We start this week with an Azure trivia fact. Azure data centers are 100% carbon neutral and about 44% of the energy comes from wind, solar and hydropower. In 2019, that number should reach 50%. Impressive. On this episode, I cover JT from Microsoft joins me to discuss the brand new HoloLens 2 and how it will be cloud connected. Azure DevOps Projects Kubernetes support gets a new feature and you can now protect Azure VMs by using storage spaces direct with Azure Site Recovery. I'm Sam Kroonenberg, and this is Azure This Week on the Air Cloud Guru Network. I am here with JT, yes, JT, uh, from Microsoft, and JT, you're a Azure Developer Engagement Lead. Is that right? That is 100% correct. Right. Uh, I guess that means that you engage developers? I do. I'm lucky enough to get to cruise around Melbourne and talk to lots of developers who are and maybe want to build stuff on Azure as their cloud. At the Mobile World Congress, MWC, in Barcelona, um, the HoloLens 2 came out, which I'm like, <gasps> I used to do a lot of HoloLens stuff. I won't go into too much of the hardware of the HoloLens because you can kind of just look that up, um, but it has greater depth of you know, uh, field of view, so it's you know, more degrees that you can see it's lighter it's more comfortable yada 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 there's a bunch of hardware features but what really was interesting to me was the whole kind of cloud integration of it with azure there's the azure spatial anchors spatial anchor is when you uh, basically take a hologram and affix it to the real world with features of a desk or something you know that's a spatial anchor and then you can upload them to the cloud now so that what does that do so uploading them to the cloud effectively lets you have multiple users sharing real world space, but sharing mixed reality holograms and assets so that you can be wearing a HoloLens and see a hologram in front of you. I can also be wearing a HoloLens and see that from my perspective, but we share that mixed reality in the world. The other cool thing that we've announced around that is that's going to be multi-platform. So you can be wearing a HoloLens and look at the hologram. I can use the SDK on an app on my iPhone and see the hologram from my point of view as well. And we share that mixed reality. So you don't need to have a $3,500 HoloLens to use it? You should definitely get one, but no, <laughs> you don't need to have one to be able to use Azure Spatial Anchors. This is really cool. Um, it basically means that we can all share the anchors that we have in all the apps that we create. Exactly. So we get a, a better user experience, um, particularly, I think, with the, the industrial focus of mm -hmm. a lot of the HoloLens 2 stuff. You mentioned hardware. I thought the coolest bit of hardware announced was the HoloLens that's mounted into a hard hat for industrial applications. Oh. But uh, yeah, it allows us to, to better sort of share that mixed reality of the real world and the non-real world. Thanks so much for joining me, JT. It's really cool. Thanks for having me. Azure DevOps is the suite of products that lets developers and operations people manage code repositories, builds and release pipelines, NuGet feeds, and much, much more. Azure DevOps projects now let you launch an app on an Azure service of your choice in a few quick steps. For example, in just a matter of minutes, it can help you provision AKS, Azure Container Registry, and start building and deploying a container app to AKS by using Azure Pipelines. The DevOps Project Dashboard also lets you monitor code commits, builds, and deployments from a single view in the Azure portal. A new feature in Azure DevOps Projects now lets you deploy multiple apps to a single AKS cluster as well. This means you don't have to provision a new container or cluster for each app you manage through the pipeline in Azure DevOps. Very cool. And if you want to know more about Kubernetes, check out our excellent course by Nigel Poulton. High availability is a critical area of any IT infrastructure, and this is no different on Azure. You have to manage your disk replication, the update and fail groups, availability sets, load balancers, network security groups, and much more. High availability is kind of like having a minivan. It's necessary to get the best experience for the users, but you hope no one ever actually notices that you have it. As part of the high availability offering, Azure is now enabling you to use Azure Storage Spaces Direct or S2D, with Azure Site Recovery. As Microsoft puts it, Storage Spaces Direct, S2D, is a software-defined storage which provides a way to create guest clusters on Azure. A guest cluster in Microsoft Azure is a failover cluster comprised of IAS VMs. It allows hosted VM workloads to failover across the guest clusters, achieving higher availability SLA 
for applications than a single Azure VM can provide. It is useful in scenarios where VM hosting a critical application like SQL or scale out file server. So that was Microsoft's words. Makes sense. This is the end for this week. You'll have to wait a whole week for more Azure Sugar from A Cloud Guru. Unless you watch this more than a week after release, in which case you can... never mind. This time I covered. JT from Microsoft joined me to discuss the brand new HoloLens 2 and how it will be cloud connected to Azure services. And yes, his full name is JT. I know. Azure DevOps Projects Kubernetes support gets new features that let you utilize each container much more efficiently. And you can now protect Azure VMs by using Storage Spaces Direct. That's the name, Storage Spaces Direct. I know. Thank you, Microsoft. With Azure Site Recovery. If you have any questions, suggestions, or Lego models you need help with, reach out to me directly via Twitter or use any of the Cloud Guru social platforms. Keep being awesome, Cloud Gurus! Mm -hmm.